Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video we'll be taking a look at the 2024 election from the exact opposite perspective of which we looked last time. Last video I did Joe Biden's best case scenario and you know how he could do in all of these states in the ideal scenario for him and now we'll be doing the opposite. This is Donald Trump's best case scenario looking at where he could win and what a uh, really good election would look like for him. So we're going to get right into it here and fill out the states that he won in 2020. Again, these are states in a best case scenario that would not under any circumstances flip. If, if Trump is winning nationwide, he is likely holding on to all of his 2020 states. And if we see a best case scenario type of election for Trump, of course, he would hold on to all the states he won last time. So we're going to start out by filling these states out here. And while I do that, I just want to say that I think this video is going to be a bit different from the Biden video because the Biden video to me is kind of, I wouldn't say more realistic because I don't think Biden's going to win Texas or Florida or do nearly as well as they had him doing in that video. But I think this video is a bit more dependent on other things happening because Donald Trump would absolutely need to do more to get to this scenario than, uh, you know, Joe Biden would. So that leaves us, um, you know, with Trump at 235 electoral votes if you give him the states that he won in 2020. And these remainder or these remaining states are states that, that were won by Biden. But I think that the best place to start is to see what the best states are for Trump out of these remaining states. So I think there's one that I want to start with, and it's Nevada. Now, Nevada, to me, I, I think could absolutely vote for Trump, even in a non-best case scenario for him. And I say that because there's a lot of good things for Republicans in Nevada. I know they had a pretty rough midterm there last November, but broadly speaking, they've been able to do better than expected in a lot of the past few elections. So in 2020, Trump lost Nevada, but only by about two and a half percent. And he did so while he was not at a good point. Like the, the, I think a lot of people forget the 2020 election was not an election that Trump was supposed to win or even get close to winning. And you know, like when you look at this electoral map, I wouldn't say he was th right there, but he didn't get blown out. And a lot of people expected him to get blown out. So I would say 2020 was a pretty bad time for Trump. Again, like say the election was held in 2019 or, you know, November. like if the election was held in November 2019 or November 2021, I think Trump would have won. But because it was held in November 2020, because of those circumstances, Trump lost. But again, I think Nevada could absolutely vote for Trump in 2024. Right now, maybe not the most likely outcome, but you look at his path, he just has to do a little better in Clark, which he actually swung, which, uh, you know, swung a point and a half to the right in 2020. He'd lose a bit of ground in the Reno area, but as long as he does well in Clark and holds on to the rural margins, he can absolutely win Nevada and buy a, a potentially decisive margin. And then another state that I would want to fill out here would be Wisconsin. Wisconsin has been pretty rough for Republicans over the past few elections. They haven't... Um, one, or they have lost the previous two governorships or governor races, I should say. Uh, Ron Johnson did win re-election, which was great for Republicans, but he only won by a point despite being expected to win by much more. And so I think when you look at uh, the or the results of the elections in Wisconsin from uh, November, they're broadly pretty good for Democrats and pretty bad for Republicans. But I do think that you could look at it from another angle, I guess. So in 2020, when Trump lost Wisconsin, he did so in a pretty weird way because he did really well in the western part of the state, kind of on the border with Iowa and Minnesota. And he won a lot of these counties, and he actually did better in most of them than he did in 2016. Obviously, he did worse in La Crosse, which is the more urban county, but he did a lot better in these smaller uh, working class counties that aren't don't make up a ton of people but are significant in that they do kind of tell a story of how the rural Midwest likes to vote in general. So um, Trump would need to do better with working class voters than he did in 2020 win Wisconsin. And it's not impossible. They are a right-trending demographic, and I think Trump has the ability to do so. He's done it before. But the issue for him is that he's losing, like, no matter how you slice it, he's, he's losing ground in the wild counties, which are much bigger, and, you know, they're trending left at a faster rate than these areas are trending right. So I would say Wisconsin's an uphill climb for Trump in 2020 to begin with, or in 2024 to begin with. But in his best-case scenario, what he'd have to do is he'd have to get a good swing towards him in the working class and rural parts of the state out here. And he'd also need to contain damage lost in the Wow counties. And on top of that, hope for lower turnout in Milwaukee. Because Milwaukee uh, gave Biden, like, a loan. It, like, how much? He won Wisconsin by uh, 20,000 votes. And he won Milwaukee 
like Milwaukee itself gave Biden like you know a, a, an 185,000 vote margin. So he'd have to cut that margin uh, or cut into that margin by a good bit, which is possible. It's it trended left in 2020, but I wouldn't say it's a left trending county in general. But again, as you can see, a lot of things have to go right for Trump to win a state like Wisconsin. Um, and it can happen, but it's not the outcome I'd bet on. And so I think that would be a good time to kind of look at the states that I think Trump would not win in the best case scenario. He'd get closer in some of them, um, certainly. But I do kind of want to get some states out of the way now that we've kind of looked at the, um, I guess, easy states that Trump would obviously be winning in a best case scenario. So I think um, we can make, just to be uh, attentive to details, we can make states like New Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island, they can be likely for Biden, um, Hawaii, Colorado would be likely, although Colorado's resuming left, but um, it's beside the point. And yeah, I, I think we can now like broadly look at what would be left for Trump here. So again, if Biden's got 204 electoral votes, I'm like a thousand percent sure he's going to be winning. Um, make it 205, actually. I think if we can take a better angle at the rest of these states. So I, I think... The best place to start, he would probably be in Arizona. And Arizona was really close in 2020, so naturally it's going to be on this list of states Trump could win. But again, like Wisconsin, it's an uphill climb because the trends in Arizona are just horrible for Trump. Largest county, Maricopa County, which again, as you can see, cast over a million votes for Joe Biden in 2020, swung 5% towards him. And in 2022, in that Senate race, uh, we saw Mark Kelly, the Democrat, win it by much more than Biden. I think he won it by like seven or eight. So... You know, for Democrats to lose Arizona in 2024, they'd have to get, like, a really bad result out of Maricopa, which is possible. They did lose the um, treasurer race, and I want to say the uh, secretary of or the state superintendent race, which, again, aren't races that are really indicative of anything. But, you know, they show Republicans can still win statewide in Arizona. But, again, Trump would have to do better in Maricopa than he did last time and not really that possible like it's it's within the realm of possibility but not by very much and so his better like i'd say he has to do better there but another lane he could go through is kind of try to work uh with hispanic voters in the south he made gains with hispanics in the south specifically in yuma and santa cruz these are smaller counties that um he won or the, sorry he won yuma he lost santa cruz by a lot but again if he can cut into these margins for biden it'll make it harder for him to make up ground in phoenix but again it's all the suburbs arizona is a very suburban state so many voters just live in the suburbs there and tr it you know, Biden can or Trump can do better with Hispanic voters in the South, which I think is actually pretty plausible, but he needs to do well in the suburbs. And so to me, Arizona is a state that at this point in time looks pretty bad for him, but I could see a scenario in which he wins it. And then I think in this case, the tipping point state would probably be Pennsylvania. And you might be surprised to not see Georgia in place of that. I'll talk about Georgia in a second, but I think Pennsylvania is really, really unique. Um, Pennsylvania is bad for Trump because... The thing is, in 2020, Trump did like really like much better than expected with working class voters and rural voters out here in this western part of the region. Like basically every part of, of western Pennsylvania except for Pittsburgh was really good for Trump. Like maybe Erie was like bad for him, but this was about what we expected. But he did so much better in all of these working class areas surrounding Pittsburgh that he was able to – like he almost won Pennsylvania despite having a historically bad showing in the suburbs. Like he did so bad here that – if you took these numbers and gave them to Mitt Romney in 2012, Mitt Romney would have lost Pennsylvania by like a bill. I don't even know. He would have lost by a billion points, though. Um, please trust me on that. But because Trump did so much better than expected in the working class areas out here, like so much better. Again, like he got really good swings towards him in some of these smaller counties, and he was actually able to maintain, um, you know, better margins. Beaver County was expected to swing like massively against him, and he only did a a point worth needed in 2016, which obviously 2016 was a really good year for him because he won Pennsylvania. Um, so if Trump can outperform expectations again in this region of the state, he could win. He could win Pennsylvania. But again, to do that, he would also need to get something back from the eastern part of the state. And I think the best way to do that would be continued gains in the Scranton area. I think Scranton is a, a good example of a place Republicans could be doing underratedly well. And Scranton did swing a good bit towards Biden, but you could say this because of the hometown boost. It's a broadly a right trending area. You could say it's like a lot of people like to debate about how Scranton's looking politically, but I'd say um, this area of northeastern Pennsylvania is a right trending area. It was pretty solid for Obama, obviously not for Biden. And so I think if Trump can do better in northeastern Pennsylvania, he's in a good spot, but he'd also need to gut, uh, to cut into the margin in Philadelphia. Philadelphia actually did swing right um, in 2020 by a good amount. 
Trump did three and a half percent better there. And he actually cracked or he almost cracked 18 percent of the vote, which is pretty good for a Republican in the city of Philadelphia. Now, he need to crack 20 to win Pennsylvania in 2024. I have no doubt about that. But he would need to do that and to hope for a lower turnout on the Democratic side. So, again, as you can see here, a lot of these scenarios are just can this happen? Can can X, Y and Z happen? Then can Trump win this state? That's kind of what it's coming down to. And I think that in Pennsylvania is just a bit more realistic than Georgia because Georgia is almost entirely left running. Pennsylvania has, you know, more mixed areas. Like I said, the suburbs of Philadelphia are pretty bad for Trump, but he could do better in northeast Pennsylvania, western Pennsylvania. So that's why I think it's a bit better for him than Georgia is. But Georgia is tough because Georgia is a state that he did historically bad in Pennsylvania. You could say, look, um, Trump did fine there because he only lost it by a point despite being expected to lose it by a lot more. And again, him losing it by a point was still the second best, I think, of any Republican performance in Pennsylvania presidentially in the 2000s. He did better than Bush, better than Romney, better than McCain. So you could certainly make that argument. But Georgia, you could not because Georgia is a state that Trump is just horrible in. Um, Bush, McCain, Romney all won it. He won it in 2016. But in 2020, we just saw this massive swing against him in the Atlanta area. And the Atlanta area is interesting because it's growing. It's just taking over. It's it's spreading like massively. I don't want to say spreading because it has a negative connotation, but like it is just taking over the Georgian electorate every year. Like every year, the Atlanta metro area makes up a bigger proportion of the electorate in Georgia. And in 2024, it's going to make up a bigger proportion than it did in 2020. And in 2020, Trump lost the state. So he has to make up a lot of ground. And the thing is, he can't really do that in Atlanta because, again, these are all massive swings. Like, it's not like they're small. Like, it's not like I'm looking at, like, a random swing, like, I don't know, like a 1.5% swing in a rural county in Mississippi, right? Like, that is a swing that's kind of random and not that important. But, a, like, massive swings like this that are entirely concentrated in a certain area are almost impossible to reverse. You almost never see these swings consistently and then just an election later they just, you know— a flip back. But what we can see is turnout differences. And in 2020 or 2022, rather, Donald Trump won or uh, not Donald Trump. Brian Kemp won Georgia because he was able to do well in the Atlanta suburbs, which Trump probably can't do. And he also improved in the rural parts of the state, especially those that are, are that are predominantly black. So, again, the regions of Georgia that vote Democratic, you have Atlanta up here, Savannah over here. And a lot of these states parts in the middle of the state are majority black or plurality black at least. And so these are essentially trying to write in 2020. A lot of these, you know, like you look these in the middle of the state, they actually trended right. And that's good for Trump. But the thing is he'd have to hope for more right trends. And he'd also would like need lower turnout from cities like Columbus, Augusta and Savannah, which are all democratic leaning cities because Atlanta, we know is going to keep going blue and keep getting bluer. But in cities like Columbus, Augusta, Savannah, there are right trends that are present there. We also saw in, tw in the runoffs uh, in 2022, we saw lower turnout from these uh, cities, specifically Savannah, which was a bit of a problem for Democrats in 2022. So I would say um, looking at the coalitions in Georgia, Trump would need lower turnout from the mid-sized cities uh, and desperately would need to get better margins in uh, the a working or the, the rural areas of the state. So that gets into 297. And the question now becomes, can we do any more? And I think the answer to that is probably no. I think he would lose Maine narrowly, probably by three or four points. He'd lose New Mexico by a similar amount, Minnesota too. Um, New Hampshire and Michigan, I think, would be the closest states in this scenario. It's kind of like 2016 too, where they were very close. But I think I'm going to give them both to Biden here. Um, New Hampshire, I, I guess, is first. I don't have much to say about New Hampshire because it, again, Voted for Biden by seven in 2020. It's left trending. It's very educated. It's a state that would just react horribly to a Trump 2024 candidacy. And I think in a in like my actual prediction, I think I have Trump losing it by like nine or ten. But I think, um, excuse me. But I think on the more possible side, Michigan is def would definitely like maybe be in play for Trump. I think if like as of right now, in the best case scenario, in the ele if the election were to be held tomorrow, I would say Biden would win Michigan. But I think. Because we want to be generous to Trump, because this video is, in, is like intrinsically meant to be generous to Trump, I think I will. I'll have some fun, and I think I'll make up a scenario in which Trump wins Michigan. And I think that er that scenario would start in the Detroit area because Detroit is pretty bad for Democrats, broadly speaking. In 2020, Wayne County actually did swing a point towards Joe Biden, but the city of Detroit did not, and we actually saw Biden not get over 600,000 votes in Wayne County, which is significant because again, um, Biden. Democrats in general, but Biden in 2024, need to win the Detroit 
city, the city of Detroit, as well as Wayne County, by a lot to keep up statewide in Michigan. And the thing is, Detroit's losing population, and we could see a lower than expected turnout there in 2024. Now, to be completely fair to Biden and the Democrats, Whitmer won Michigan by like 11 without with like pretty bad turnout from Detroit. So it's not like, you know, we see a drop of turnout from Detroit and Biden's dead. He can obviously win Michigan without it. But I think that's the first step of the, you know, like Trump wins Michigan master plan. Right. And I think that the second step to that would be getting like just maxing out working class areas. Macomb County is a good example of this. Macomb uh, was a county that was pretty solid for Obama that voted for Trump by over 40,000 votes. He'd need to do well there. He'd need to do well in kind of the thumb of Michigan. He'd also need to continue to improve in these areas in central Michigan. We look at Saginaw, which is a uh, industrial city that is very, very um, unique in that it's kind of right trending, but also swung towards Biden in 2020. Again, like Saginaw County swung towards Biden despite the fact that a lot of working class areas did not. So I think... Broadly speaking, Michigan is really hard for Trump because the working class areas in Michigan are just not that right trending. But let's say Trump is better than we think. Let's say he surprises us like he did in 2016. He could win Michigan in that scenario. He'd also need like heroic um, or I shouldn't say heroic, but I, I guess like magical performances in, you know, Grand Rapids, uh, Kalamazoo, like in the western part of the state. These areas of the state are trending to the left. Uh, you know, you look this this coast, southern coast on the west trending to the left by a lot in 2020 so i would say for trump to win michigan he needs to pray for lower turnout in detroit get better margins there you know max out these working class areas in the middle and then do really well for whatever reason in the west it's not a scenario that i think is likely i would not bet any money on trump doing remotely well in michigan but i think because he won it in 2016 there is a prayer for him so um that i think would be my best case scenario for trump in 20. 24, I don't think anything else you could really make the case for maybe New Hampshire if you're feeling generous, but I am being as generous as I can to Trump right now. So um, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Tell me, do you think that Trump would have done better than this in a best case scenario? Do you think there's any states I've missed? Um, let me know and I'll see you all in the next video.